So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going through some GCSE Maths Foundation with a focus on quadratics, looking at turning points and we'll also go through some past exam questions relating to this topic. Now if you're wanting access to the questions that we go through in this video then all you need to do is just click on the link and I strongly recommend having a go at these questions uh, before watching this video and going through the answers. So on a curve, the turning point is where the gradient changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. And at this point, the gradient is zero. Now, often after plotting a quadratic curve or what we call a parabola, you may be asked to state the roots where basically where the curve crosses the x axis and where the equation of the curve is equal to zero and or state the turning point or what we class the stationary point as a coordinate or the x and y ordinate of the turning point. So let's just go detail about what that actually means. So if we, let's just label these axes. That's Y, X, Y, and X. So when you're drawing a quadratic, it's either going to look like a positive parabola or it's going to look like a negative parabola. Now the turning point is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically where the gradient changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So looking at this first one, here you can see that the gradient is negative. So we've got a negative gradient. And this little blue point is our turning point. And then after that, if I get a different color, let's go for uh, pink. And this region here is where we've got a positive gradient. And likewise, if we had a negative um, parabola, then here, let's get the same colors. So this region here, we have a positive gradient because it's going up. And this blue dot represents the turning point, which doesn't necessarily need to be on the Y axis. It could be absolutely anywhere. And this here is going to be where we have negative gradient. So once you've been asked to draw a quadratic curve, again, you might get asked to work out the roots and also the stationary points. So for example, if I draw another positive parabola, then these two points here are the roots or where the equation equals zero. And again, if we had a negative parabola, then the roots would be at this point here and this point here. So those two points there represent the roots. Now in terms of looking at roots, you could have either no roots if your curve does not cross the x-axis. You could have one root if the parabola perfectly touches the x-axis and the x-axis only. So where the we class as the x-axis being a tangent, or as you can see on these two diagrams that we've drawn here, that you could also have two roots. So again, the number of roots can vary from zero to two. So let's have a look at some past exam questions. Now, as always, if you're wanting to have a go at these questions before we go through the answers and continue watching this video, then all you need to do is just click on the link in the description below and you can then print off or have a go answering these questions uh, from your screen or before we go through it. So looking at question one, it says complete the table of values for this. Now, again, these questions could appear on both the calculator and the non-calculator. So what I'll do is I will just basically treat these questions as a non-calculator unless I really do need to use my calculator. So for this, all we need to do is now typically you will never get asked to complete a full table of values. There'll be some values that are left. The reason for that is because it's very time consuming. So looking at this first value here, so what we need to do is we need to substitute x equals minus 1 into this equation. So here, I just label this as 1. So then what we've got then is we're going to have minus 1 squared minus 2 
times minus 1. Now minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1. And then we've got minus 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. And then 1 minus minus 2 becomes 1 plus 2. So then the answer is 3. Let me just get rid of that one so it doesn't look like a 13. Like so. Then for our next value, so for this we're going to substitute x equals 2. So then when we're substituting x equals 2, x equals minus 1. We've got then 2 squared minus 2 times 2. So here we've got 4 minus 4, which is 0. And then for our third value, this is where we're going to substitute x equals 3. So I've got 3 squared minus 2 times 3. So that's going to be 9 minus 6, which is 3. So then from this, what I then want to do is plot these coordinates. So at minus 1, it's at 3. So that's going to be here. At 0, it's 0. Then at, my, at 1, it's at minus 1, which is here. And at 2, it's 0. And at 3, it is 3. So as you can see, it does make that U shape. So now what I need to do is just simply join the points up. Because for part B, it does say draw the graph for the equation from values of minus 1 to 3. So what I need to do is just carefully join those points up. And you always want to make sure that your curve does go through all the points and it should make a nice U shape. So it should look like this. The next question then says work right down the coordinates of the turning points. As you can see, this point here is my turning point. Probably shouldn't use blue because it's really difficult to see. And that coordinate there is 1 minus 1. And remember that your X ordinate goes first and your Y ordinate goes second. Moving on to question two, it says here is a graph of y equals x squared minus 7x plus 10 for the values of x equals 0 to 7. And the question says write down the roots of this equation when it equals 0. So the roots are these two points here. So this is a root and this point here is a root. So the answers then are going to be 2 and 5. Now you could write it as a coordinate. But it just says write down the roots, and so it's just when x is 2 and when x is 5, that's when this equation will be true. The next question then says write down the x coordinate of the turning point of the curve. Now, the turning point of the curve, I would say, is this value here. Now, the x value, I would say, is going to be 3.5. So it's only looking for the x value. So it's a value on the x axis that this turning point. lies on. So it's not asking me for a coordinate, it's asking me for the x ordinate. Now moving on to question 3, it says a quadratic curve intersects the axes at minus 3, 0, 3, 0 and 0, 18. Work out the equation of the curve. Now this one is probably a higher level question on the foundation. But So let me just talk you through one way of approaching this question. So for this we know that it's a negative parabola. which therefore means that we're going to have a negative x squared. So when I look at my brackets, I've got to make sure I've got a negative x squared. And the only way of getting a negative x squared is if we've got x here and x here. So in one bracket, we've got positive x and in the other bracket, we've got a negative x because when we expand those two things out, it's going to give me a negative x squared. Now, from this, we also know that the roots are 3 and minus 3. So if I put 3 there, working at the root of this would give me minus 3. And if I put a 3 here, then the root of this would give me minus th uh, positive 3. So that would give me those two roots. Now, the problem is, is that when I expand this out, I'm going to end up with positive 9 when I want 18. So what I then need to do is multiply that by 2. And that, therefore, will give me each of these three points as a parabola so it will give me the shape of a negative parabola because my x squared is going to be negative it's going to give me roots of minus three and three because i've got those two numbers inside my brackets and then to get the 18 because the brackets when i expand them is going to give me nine i then multiply that by two 
and that will give me the equation. Now from this, what I then need to probably do is expand it. So if I just write these, this equation just the other way around, so I've got three plus X, three minus X, and then I look to expand it. So I've got Y equals two, and let's do these brackets first. So I've got nine minus three X plus three X minus X squared. And then the X's cancel out. So I've got Y equals two lots of nine minus X squared. So Y equals 18 minus two X squared. And there is the equation of that parabola. Moving on to question four, it says here is a quadratic graph and the question is saying circle the X ordinate of the turning point of the graph. So here is my turning point And the coordinate of that is one minus four. Now the question is asking for the X ordinate of the turning point. So I'm just looking for this number here, which is a positive one. So the answer then is gonna be my third option. Moving on to question five, uh, it says complete the table of values. So again, let's work through this. So to work out this first value, X is gonna equal minus two. So I've got minus two squared minus minus two minus two, which then becomes four plus two minus two, which then becomes four. Then looking at my next value of minus one, so that's when X equals minus one. So here I've got minus one squared minus minus one minus two. So minus one squared is one plus one minus two. So then that's then going to become uh, zero. And then with my last option question here, when X equals two, I'm going to end up with two squared minus two minus two, which is four minus two minus two, which is zero. Now, if you have got a calculator now, you can do these questions on a calculator. Let me show you how you can do it on a Casio one. So if you go to, uh, the mode setup and you should have an option that says table and press seven. Now, once you get the F of X, what you then want to do is enter your equation. So this here is your equation. So that's what I want to enter on my calculator. Now you might be asking, how do you get X? Well, if I press alpha and then press the close bracket button, my X squared appears, then squared minus alpha close bracket minus two. If I press equals, now if it says G of X, just ignore that by pressing equals again. Now the starting value is your starting value of X, which in this case is minus two. And my end value is three. And the step is basically what are your X numbers going up in? Well, they're going up in ones, so I'm just gonna press equals. And what you should find is that here, your F of X values are your Y ordinates. So what you can do is just copy those into your table. So as you can see, minus two is four, minus one is zero, so I've got that correct. Then at zero, it's at minus two, which is correct. One, it's minus two. At two, it's at zero, which is exactly what I've done. And it's uh, three it's at four, so it's all good. So then let's now plot these coordinates. So minus two, it's at four. Oh, don't wanna plot it with a highlighter. It's at four, at minus one, it's at zero. At zero, it's a minus two. At one, it's at minus two. At two, it's at zero and three it's at four. Now you need to be careful with this because the reason for that is you can see between the two of z values of x equals zero and x equals one, they both give me, they're both at minus two. What you don't want to do is do a flat bottom. So you don't want when you can join your points up for it to look like this. Now that you would lose marks because this needs to be curved like so. So what you're joining of the points needs to look like is it needs to look like this where this is curved so it goes beyond the minus two you don't want to have a flat bottom basically the next question then says write down the x ordinate of the turning point so the x ordinate of the turning point is here 
and this is the value that I'm wanting. So this here is my turning point. And my X value is at 0.5. Then moving on to question six, it says the graph of Y equals A plus BX plus minus X squared is shown. Circle the coordinates of the turning point. So my turning point is here and that's at 216. So this here is my turning point. And that's at 216. So I just need to circle 216, which is my third option. The next question then says circle the value of A. Now A is the, because it's the constant, it's basically where it crosses the Y intercept. And the Y intercept is at 12. So we can circle 12. The next question then says circle the two roots. Well, the two roots are where the curve crosses the X axis. So it's there and there. So it's at minus two and six. I need to find minus two and six, which is my first option.